G'day, hope you're all going well. Today we're gonna to be checking out App Daemon. We're gonna be using it to create an automation to work alongside Home Assistant. Now, the creators of App Daemon have said it's not designed to replace the automations and scripts that are in Home Assistant, but rather to work along with them. App Daemon makes it easier to create more complex automations and it's run in a Python execution environment and you use Python-like script to write them. So we're gonna be able to use Python coding to control our homes, our surrounds. Let's go check it out. Okay, so to test out App Daemon, we're gonna write an automation to control an extra switch we installed um, in our kitchen last week. Now the Shelly demo, if you wanna see the install for it, it's just up here, had an extra input and we added a switch to that and we're gonna use that switch to during the during the day, we're gonna use it to open the gate and after a certain time period, we're gonna change it so that that switch is a kill switch that turns off all the lights in the house and it's gonna give us five minutes to head off to bed before it does that. And in both cases, it's gonna give us some feedback to know, so we know that the script is running by flashing the light in the dining room a couple of times. So let's go and see first how we can set up App Daemon and get it going and then how we can write a basic script like that. Okay, now we're over in Home Assistant. We can start it off by heading over to the side panel here and we can just go to the to the add-on store. And in the add-on store, we're going to download App Daemon 4 and that comes from the Home Assistant community add-ons. So search through and find it. I've got it installed already just here, the App Daemon 4 app. So once it's installed and running, um, once it's installed, press start to get it running. And you will see that there is some configuration that you can do here, but we're not gonna do that today. And we're gonna come across and you'll see that there's a log that comes through here, but we're gonna actually change it so it doesn't come through here. It's gonna be accessible via the terminal instead. And we're gonna to need to use the log when you, when you make apps, you will need to use it. And we're gonna go and see how we can set that up right now. So I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code to do that and we'll head there now. So we're in Visual Studio Code and we can see that you'll have a folder in your config file where all the other things are for your Home Assistant. So if you open that up and have a look, you'll see first of all the app daemon.yaml file, which is our setup file. So open that up and there'll be some stuff in here that you need to complete and fill out, like the right latitude and longitude and your time zone. I had the wrong time zone in here and it drove me crazy trying to get, figure out why an app wasn't working and it was just that it had the wrong time. So uh, App Daemon actually does sort of run separately to Home Assistant. They describe it as a loose coupling. So you can actually restart App Daemon to get it going. You don't have to, to get the configuration updated. You don't have to restart Home Assistant. They're sort of partly separate. Now, if you want to use secrets, you can add the secrets file here and you can use the secrets file in the same one that you use for Home Assistant. And you can update your location, your Home Assistant location on the network and get a long life token, which you can get from your profile page. Down the bottom, you can get a long life token and create one for App Daemon. So copy and paste that into here. I've just put a 20 second delay it can avoid errors on startup. This is all to do with HA dashboard. If you want to check that out, that's a pretty cool thing to have a look at. And last of all, we've got the logs here. So we just want to add these in here, the logs. So the four, the first four are the standard ones and the main log is the one you'll use quite a bit to see errors. And you can this is the path that you can use and the names you can give them just here. Now, if you're inside your app daemon folder, you'll need to make a logs file if that's where you want to put them. That's where I've put them. And we've also got some custom ones here. So the one we're going to be using today is for flash and the log, that's the name of the log is the flash log. This here has to be here. If it's a custom one, it has to have a name, although it doesn't appear to be used for anything outside of here and then a, where you want it to go and the name of the, the actual file name you want it to have. So that's how you set up the logs. Now, the next section we're gonna have a look at is the apps. So 
all the apps go in the apps folder and you can put all your files, all the ones you make in different directories and sort them any way you want. And app daemon will search through and find all of them. And it doesn't matter where they are. It will look down through the directories to find them. As long as they, the setup is in the app setup here. So our app we're making today is flashlight. So that's the name of our app. Now the module is what the file name has to be called. So we're going to create, create the file name now. And we're going to call it flash because that's the name of the module .py, .py. Now this is based on one of the examples. I think it's on the app daemon website. Um, so you'll probably, if you look through there, you'll recognize some of the code from there. And I've sort of copied it. This was the first one I tried out. It's a good one to get started on. And the class is flashlight and the log is called flash so that's by if we put that by putting that there the default logging position is to the custom log that we made so we're going to use that and we're going to need it to especially with more complicated apps to find out what's why stuff isn't working so that's the app setup now we can actually go and write it the first thing every app will always need is this we need to import the class of has and that's going to be used, uh, our class that we're going to create is going to inherit from this class. All the functions um, that we're going to use, and that's part of app daemon. Now, after we've done that, we can do our first, we can set up our class. And so our class is called flash warning. We have to make sure that that's case sensitive. So it has to be the same as what we've got here flashlight there we go so that's our first class and this is our first method the initialize method and this is run every time the app is started and this sets up the app so if there was nothing in here your app wouldn't do anything at all so our first function that's used which is part of app daemon the listen state function we can come over to the reference and we can see how it works and Basically what it does is it listens to the state of an entity within Home Assistant. So we're going to be listening to the, to the entity state of a binary sensor in the kitchen, a switch. And if it hears a change in state, and specifically if it hears a change, the new state is on, then it will call this function here. And that's called the callback function. And we're going to write that next. Now it's got information on here once again about callback functions. So to create one, you give it a name, any name you want to call it. I've called it the flash function in here. Yeah. And it will take an entity. So the entity that's caused the callback and the attributes, the old state, the new state, and we can use those in our callback function. We're actually not going to be using any of those entities in our callback function. So basically, this is going to hear the sensor and load, run the function in this particular app. Okay, so the next section we're going to look at is the flash callback function. So um, basically what this function does is it says if it is between now, and that's a function that's once again part of app daemon. And now is the two times, so between 6 o'clock in the morning and 9 o'clock at night, then it's going to do this stuff. First of all, it sets the variable time to the current time. And then it does a log so we can see what's happening. And it's going to write the log. The second button is pressed, and it's going to insert the current time into the log. Next, it's going to run the script. So this is it's going to do self-turn-on. Now, self-turn-on is, another once again, another function of app daemon. And it will can turn on anything in Home Assistant, so any switch, light, script, that anything that can be turned on. So that's actually going to open our gate if the gate is not already open, and that's part of the script. Next, it's going to set a variable flash count to zero, and that variable is going to be used to determine how often the light in the dining room will flash to let us know that the script is running. And then it's going to run a um, a timer function, which is part of App Daemon, run in sets a timer so basically it sets a timer and then once the timer has expired it's set to one second at the moment so it's in seconds then it will run this callback 
flash warning. So that's our next one. But before we do that, we're going to basically duplicate this, change it so that between 10 at night and 5 o'clock in the morning, it's going to run a different script, and that script will turn off all the lights in the house after five minutes. So basically, we can hit the button, go to bed, and then all, all the lights will get turned off that have been left on. And that's going to do the same warning. So once that, that's been received and the script has been turned on, it's going to flash our light. So we're reusing part of the program. So next we're going to write our final function. So the flash warning function, what it will do when it's called is it will toggle the dining room light, which is an entity in my home assistant setup. It will then add one to the variable flash count. And then if the flash count is less than four, so if you want to make the flash go for longer, we can simply change this to a higher number and it will flash the light more off, more times. And then once, if that if it's under that number, it will log. It will log that the um, each flash to the to the log, and tell you what flash number it is, and then it will rerun itself, so it will restart this and do it again, and then after six cycles, it'll stop. So that's basically our program complete. All we need to do now is give it a go and test it out. So to, to test it out, what we'll do is we will come and load up a terminal. You can use any terminal you like, but the one built into Home Assistant is easy enough to use, so we'll use that. We will head over to our config file and to app daemon and to a log, log file. And if we look in here, there's, we'll see some of our logs. We will probably need to restart app daemon. Okay, now that app daemon's restarted, we've got our flash log that it's been correct has been created. So we can uh, tail those logs with tail dash f, and what we can actually do is tail the main log. So app daemon log and flash log at the same time. So it will show us both logs. So it's told us that our app is initialized and it should be ready to use. So let's just try it out. So we see there that it didn't work because it's got an error. Uh, so I put one in there. So if we were to come across and have a look, you'll find that when you're working on this and you're starting out, you'll find that you'll make lots of little errors like this and it was actually just the colon just here. So now we've fixed it up. We can have a look at our log and it's actually reloaded it and we, it should be okay to run now. So we'll give that another go. We'll try try running it. So we can see that that worked perfectly. It turned off all the lights in my house. It counted the flashes and we can see the time that it was pressed at. So that's pretty much it. The app's finished. It's obviously a pretty simple app. And next time we'll look at something a little bit more complicated with a few more functions that we can check out. And, and I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you'll be able to make use of it and obviously get stuck in and try out some stuff yourself. If you want to know more about Python itself, Obviously, I'm not a Python programmer, I'm an electrician. There's heaps of resources on the, on the net that you can check out. Two that I really like, um, that I've looked at and learned a lot from is Corey Schaefer and Tech with Tim. They've got quite a few good videos about Python. And I guess it would help if you're interested in doing this sort of automation on Home Assistant to know more about how Python itself works because you can use a lot of Python modules that um, are available in, in this app daemon as well. Anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos about home automation and electrical installations, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See ya.